Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and I'm so happy to have you joining me for another cook with me video. In today's video, we're going to be making a cozy, cool night dinner all in one pot. We're going to be making some chicken and dumplings tonight. It's going to warm you from the inside out and feed your family a delicious feast. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, we're going to be using my Dutch oven to cook our chicken and dumplings. However, this recipe does not go into the oven. It's just going to cook on your stove top, uh, dumplings and all. So if you don't have a Dutch oven, don't worry. You can use a regular large stock pot to cook today's recipe. To get us started today, we're going to cook our chicken. Start by adding a little bit of olive oil to your pot. And today we are using chicken thighs. So for this recipe, you need about two pounds of chicken thighs. Now I did purchase um, bone in skin on chicken breast. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the skin off of my chicken. I don't wanna have any of that in my soup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off. I am going to uh, start by searing my chicken. This just locks in the flavor and the moisture so that when you do cook your chicken the rest of the way, it just stays really moist and delicious. Um, and I'm also going to leave the bone in while I sear my chicken and we'll take it off of the bone later before we put it into our soup. Make sure that you season your chicken with some salt and pepper. Go ahead and be liberal. You want your chicken to have good flavor. And then we're gonna take it over to the stove. Before you drop your chicken, make sure that your oil is nice and hot. You want this to have an instant sizzle when you put it into the pot. That is the key to a good sear, is making sure that your pot and your oil has had plenty of time to get nice and hot so that when you place whatever it is that you're searing into the pot or into the pan, it already begins to sear. If my children were not screaming in the background, I would have turned up the sound so you could hear the sear. I love that sizzle when I'm cooking. I know that means it's getting a nice caramelization and it's gonna hold on to moisture and it just makes everything taste a little bit better. So you're gonna cook this for about a minute or so on each side so it gets a good sear. Your goal is not to cook your chicken through, just to have the outsides cooked. And we're gonna chop this up into bite-sized pieces and put it back into our pot later to finish cooking. So don't worry about that. Go ahead and take it out, set it on a plate, and we're gonna come back to that in a bit. Now that our protein is done and resting, we're gonna go ahead and get our vegetables ready to go. For this recipe, you're going to need one small yellow onion, about a cup of carrots. I used two carrot sticks and that seemed appropriate. You're also going to need two sticks of celery as well as some garlic. Now for me, I'm using garlic that's already minced and in my fridge, but if you're going to cut your own garlic, you need about three cloves. I'm just gonna take a second to peel my carrots and get those diced up into small pieces. I cleaned my celery already and we're gonna dice that up into small pieces. And then we're also going to dice up our small yellow onion. talked extensively about getting good knives in your kitchen if you are someone who enjoys cooking. This is absolutely 
an essential, I believe. Um, and this is a perfect time of year to start thinking about getting a good knife for your kitchen. So the knife that I'm using there is a Wusthof knife and I purchased it from uh, William Sonoma and then handed it to Danny for him to wrap and put under the tree. <laughs> I wanted things to be easy for him. I knew what I was looking for and I wanted to make sure that I had a nice knife for our new kitchen. So these are a little bit pricier, but I promise you there is a huge difference in your cooking when you have good tools and good utensils. So if you are in the market for some good knives, this is the chef's knife, the six inch chef's knife from Wusthof. I'll try to have it linked for you down below. And it is by far my absolute favorite kitchen utensil. I use it every single day, multiple times a day, and I love it. The other thing I would highly recommend is this scraper that I have here that I'm using to pick up my diced vegetables off of my cutting board. I purchased this on Amazon and I will link it for you. I think it's in my kitchen um, essentials in my storefront. Another great tool that helps you just get every last bit of, you know, vegetable or food that you are cooking with. I just really find that utensil to be incredibly beneficial. I use it all the time. So those are some things that I would recommend. And if you are looking for good things for your kitchen, if you're just getting started and not sure what to buy, like I said, check out my Amazon storefront for some key essentials in my kitchen. Now that our vegetables are ready, we're going to go ahead and add five tablespoons of butter into our pot. Now I used salted because that's what I had, but you can use unsalted. Go ahead and give that a minute to fully melt and kind of scrape the bottom of your pan as this is happening. So give you a little bit of a deglaze and then you're going to toss in your vegetables. So as you see, my butter is bubbling and it's starting to brown just a tad. That means it's ready for my vegetables. And these are going to saute, probably saute them for about five minutes or so until they start to soften up. You don't want to do it too long because they are going to cook in liquids later and we don't want them to become mush. So once those have sauteed for a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and add in my garlic. Like I said, the recipe calls for three garlic cloves. I probably put in about four or five, but that's how I roll. I like a lot of garlic. I like a lot of flavor. I always put more than what the recipe calls for. You don't have to do that. That's just how I like to cook. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our seasonings. So you're going to need um, a teaspoon of onion powder. You're also going to need a half a teaspoon each of dried basil, parsley, thyme, rosemary, and mustard powder. You're also gonna need a fourth of a teaspoon of ground sage and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. Go ahead and give that a good stir. You're gonna to wanna to keep a close eye on your vegetables so that you don't burn any of your seasonings or your garlic, so just keep them moving. Next up, we're gonna add in some Worcestershire. The recipe calls for about a teaspoon. I probably put in a little less than a teaspoon. You can also put in a teaspoon of hot sauce if you'd prefer at about this time. And go ahead and let those cook for just a moment or so more. And then we're gonna add in our thickening agent. Today we're using flour. So you're gonna go ahead and add in a third of a cup of flour and stir that up really, really well. Now that's going to come together with your butter and it's going to create a really nice vegetable roux. And you're gonna let this cook for a minute or two so you can cook off the starchy flavor of the flour. So just kind of mix it all in and then spread it out across the hot bottom and let that cook for a moment or two and stir it up, you know, every 
so often so it doesn't burn. But like I said, it's really important that you let all of that starchy flavor burn off before you continue cooking. Next up on our list is our chicken stock. So you're going to need four and a half cups of chicken stock for this recipe. Start off by adding in about a half a cup or so, give that a good mix, and then just keep adding a half a cup or so in at a time as you mix that up. This will prevent your uh, vegetable roux from getting clumpy and it'll make it easier to keep it stirred and incorporated and like I said, not clumpy and coagulated. So it's really important that you put this in a little bit at a time and then just keep stirring. And once you have all of that in, make sure to scrape the bottom. I'm using a rubber spatula that allows me to very easily scrape the bottom repeatedly to make sure I'm getting all of the flour and everything off the bottom of my Dutch oven. I don't want anything to stick and to burn and to change the flavor. Next up, you're gonna need a cup and a half of half and half. And again, you're gonna put a little bit in at a time. I added in a half a cup, then poured the other half a cup into my measuring cup there, gave it a good stir, and gently added in the rest of the half and half. Your uh, soup is going to be pretty um, watery at this point, or very liquid, not very thick, very thin, but it will thicken up before you eat it, I promise. You're going to let this come to a simmer on the stove and it will thicken up. Next up, we're adding in a uh, chicken bouillon cube. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this part. I do love the depth of the flavor that this adds. So if you have them in your pantry, I would highly recommend that you add these in. I do think they just add a little something extra. You can give it a taste at this point to see if you need more seasoning. And then you're also going to add in about three fourths of a cup of frozen peas. Give that a good stir. And then you're gonna turn it up until it comes to a very gentle boil. Drop it down to a simmer and let that simmer while we prepare our dumplings. For our dumplings, you're going to need two cups of flour. Now the recipe calls for cake flour. It's a little bit of a lighter flour. I used regular flour and it worked out perfectly fine. If you don't have cake flour, don't worry about it. Scoop your flour into your measuring cup so you don't over measure. Next up, you're going to need two teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder is going to give them a nice fluff and that's what you want in your dumpling. Next up, you're gonna need half a teaspoon of baking soda, as well as one teaspoon of salt. Don't skip this part. And half a teaspoon, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of just regular table sugar. So we're gonna to toss that in. You're also going to add in half a teaspoon of garlic powder for some extra good, delicious flavor. And then you're gonna add in your milk. So for this recipe, you need 1 fourth of a cup of cold milk. Go ahead and combine your dry ingredients, then pour your milk directly on top and give that a little bit of a stir. It doesn't need to be fully combined at this point. We still have more wet ingredients to add. Next up, you're gonna add in 3 fourths a cup of cold sour cream. That's what I'm adding in now. I didn't have a fourth of a cup scoop because that was in my hot chocolate, so I'm using something else at this time. And then lastly, you're going to add in four tablespoons of melted butter. Give this a good stir just until your ingredients are combined. You don't want to over stir this. It will give you a too chewy and tough of a, a texture for your dumplings. So just enough to get it fully combined. And then we're gonna take this over to the stove to get it added into our soup. The last thing to prepare is our chicken. So remember our chicken is not fully cooked, it's just uh, had a good sear to it. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off the bone. If you bought boneless, skinless chicken breast, I'm sorry, chicken thigh, then you don't have to worry about this part. I needed to take mine off the bone. I do feel like it keeps your chicken thigh extra tender when you keep it on the bone, but this is completely optional. You do not have to do this. If you do, just make sure that you take it off. 
Then you're gonna cut your chicken into bite-sized pieces before putting it back into our pot. Make sure all your pieces are about the same size so that they cook evenly. This is not you know, an end of the world kind of thing, but it does make cooking a little bit easier. I'm gonna give my hands a quick little wash, and then we're gonna take our chicken over to our soup and add this directly into our broth. It will finish cooking in our delicious steamy pot there. It's like cooking in a hot pot. And make sure that it's on a nice low simmer. It doesn't, you don't want it to overboil or anything like that. So stir that in and now it's time to add our dumplings to the top of our soup. So to do our dumplings today, you're going to need a small cookie scoop similar to an ice cream scoop, but you use it for uh, uh, drop cookies. So any kind of cookie that you just spoon out and drop onto the pan, that's what you would use this for. And that's what we're using for our dumplings today. Keeps them all the same size, allows them to cook evenly. So I'm just scooping it out of the dough and plopping it right on top of our soup. It's important that you just kind of let it float there at the top cover the top of your soup this makes just the right amount of batter for just enough dumplings to cover the very top of your soup put the lid on nice and tight and you're going to set your timer for 15 minutes you're going to be tempted to peek but don't do it you don't want to let out any of that warm air in there or the steam that's cooking up your dumplings while that's cooking we're going to go ahead and prepare our uh, parsley topping. This just gives your chicken and dumplings a nice fresh flavor. So I'm just picking off a little bit of the parsley. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a nice rough chop. And that's gonna be ready to go on top of our soup. It's finally the moment of truth. We're gonna take the lid off of our soup. We're gonna use a toothpick to check that the inside of our dumplings are fully cooked. We're also gonna take this off of the heat so it doesn't keep bubbling up. We're gonna add a little bit of our parsley topping and we are ready to enjoy this delicious, cozy, cool nights, perfect little soup. Okay, my friends, dinner is done. It smells fantastic, it looks fantastic, and my belly is ready to enjoy this. So I'm gonna go ahead and dish myself up a little. It looks so good and so comforting. Kind of reminds me of like a matzo ball soup. That's what it smells like. And I've got a fork for my soup because that's where I'm at tonight. I've got the proper utensil now. Our chicken is fully cooked inside of our soup. It is ready to be devoured. Mm. That's so warm and cozy. The soup thickens up nicely, so it's definitely a creamy soup and the dumplings just kind of get nice and um, fluffy on the top. I'm pairing my soup tonight with a little bit of red wine. This is the sweet red blend from Barefoot. It's my absolute favorite red wine. A little bit on the sweeter side, but 
absolutely delicious with a warm and cozy salty soup. So I'm excited to enjoy that. I wanna just say a big thank you for joining me in today's video. If you found this recipe inspiring and you decide to make it, I would love to see how it turns out and how you like it. So make sure you're following me and tag me on Instagram at Charlotte Grove Farmhouse. And until the next video, my friends, happy eating.